But what I did after seven years of migraines, I gave up trying to cure them. And sometimes the body is trying to tell us something. And I did this meditation called Just This Much. And what came was some movement of the symptoms. I never had a migraine again. I am so reminded of the desperation I felt with a hip injury that I had, migraines that I had, and, and the physical ailments that I could not get cured or help with going to doctors. And Carl Jung said, don't cure symptoms, follow them, which I ended up doing, which meant getting in touch with what is the body trying to communicate with me. Sometimes you just slipped and fell. It's not communicating anything, except it needs a little time. But then there are those other things that become chronic or something that you now kind of work your life around. Oh, I can't do that because I don't know if I'm going to have, a, you know, irritable bowel or I'm going to have a migraine or if my back is going to go out, if I'm going to go on this long walk. So all of a sudden your life kind of becomes architect, uh, the architecture of your life is around your body and your ailments, even whether you do something at the beach or not. Well, I don't want to be seen in a bathing suit or I'm just not quite there. You know what I mean? So as all those years that I did deep body work and somatic work and really worked with people for 20 years, some people for those 20 years, once a month, I mean, once a week, which is an incredible relationship to have with people. But I got them after a surgery or after physical therapy when the injury or the pain now had kind of mutated and become even more or a little bit different, but it didn't go away. And sometimes the body is trying to tell us something. I want to read to you out of just, you know, you got to do the books. James Hollis, Finding Meaning in the Second Half of Life, How to Finally Really Grow Up. And here he talks about being, um, he was a Jungian therapist, is a Jungian therapist at this moment in time. And he talked about the joint task of understanding symptoms, but also tracking them to their original origin. Again, go back to Jung. Don't cure symptoms, follow them. What does that exactly mean? Don't just immediately live your life on Advil or medications or, you know what I mean? Don't just go for getting the pain out of there. What is it beneath it? Let me go on of what he's saying. Ooh. Uh, then where do I want to start? Uh, there is always a logical connection between a surface symptom or pattern and historical wounding to the soul. Even though the external symptoms may seem irrational, even crazy, they always emanate from and give symbolic expression to the wounding that has occurred. Therefore, we are paradoxically obligated to thank our symptoms for they catch our attention, compel seriousness, and offer profound clues as to the deep will an intentionality of our own psyche. I'm going to talk about migraines and having them for a decade. Then I'm going to get back to this. Let me just put this down here. I have migraines and 
having gone through all the reasons, hormones, this, that, this was in from 30 to 40, and dealing with medications that helped to steer them away or deal with them when they were there, actually nothing really helped me. I won't go into the agony of migraines, but if by chance you've had them, I have such compassion. What I didn't realize until I realized it, there was a, like a volcano within me wanting to bust out of the constraints of my responsibilities. And I had a lot of responsibilities. And the only time that I could take off from being a massage therapist, or at that time it was just that, was when I had a migraine. But I couldn't take off all the time because I had to make a living. But what I did after seven years of migraines, I gave up trying to cure them. And I found, because it was useless. And I mean, I have done, did everything. But I started to find a place within me that I could live with the pain. And I did this meditation called Just This Much. But I could handle that migraine for just this much time. Instead of wanting it to be out of my body, you know, wanting it to be over, which is excruciating, I learned to be with it and to befriend it, to accept this is what my body was communicating in the moment and to live with. I had three more years of dealing with migraines until, and I don't know how this happened and I don't believe in magical potions and miracles. I do believe in miracles. I do believe in miracles. I just think they come out of the blue. So back to this. If you have something that you have been working with and trying to find the cure for or the answer for, and this finds you there, I'm not saying that I have your answer at all all, but I may have a little bit of a way to carry what you are living with. Just a different way to carry it instead of trying to find a cure for it, because that was my seven years of absolute uh, unhappiness, despair. Uh, yeah, just... You, you already know. If you're watching this, we know. So what I did is I made it more of an internal quest to understand, not to heal, to understand. So I had to let go of the attachment that, oh, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to get really clear on this. This is really clear. And I'm just going to just like take out the cords that are binding me. Or I'm just going to do just a, a prayer for like, you know, seven and a half days, two hours at the full moon. And that, that I did all that. Nothing worked. And I was more frustrated. But this is what helped. Because I learned to live with just this much, just this much pain. I can handle this for just this much time. And what came was some movement of the symptoms. So let me go back to the book, because this is what happened. So I left off with ah, that it catches our attention. This pain catches our attention. In the end, we will only be transformed when we can recognize and accept the fact that there is a will within each of us, quite outside of the range of conscious control, a will which knows what is right for us, what is repeatedly reporting to us via 
our bodies, emotions, and dreams, and is incessantly encouraging our healing and wholeness. That's what happened for me. I'm going to say it again. In the end, we can only be transformed when we recognize and accept the fact that there is a will, there is a will within each of us, quite outside the range of conscious control. Ooh, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to do these stretches with these bands three times a week, and then I'm going to ice, and then I'm going to cold. A will which knows what is right for us, which is repeatedly reporting to us via our bodies, emotions, and dreams, and is incessantly encouraging our healing and wholeness. We are all called to keep this appointment with the inner life, and many of us never do. Fortunately, this insistent invitation comes to us again and again. Now, I don't know if the actions that I took 10 years in were the door to freedom from migraines. I don't know. I don't know. But I can tell you what I did do. I got very honest of what was happening before the migraine, after the migraine, and what the migraines allowed me to do and allowed me to explore. And that's when I got really, really into, out of sheer necessity, the power of hypnosis, guided meditation, self-talk. And then I got really honest with my life and what I was committed to. And when I made a certain decision, which was for me, I made a bold decision to go back to school at 40 and not stay in the career of body work that I've been doing for 20 years that I loved, but my hands hurt and a whole bunch of things. When I made that decision to go back and become educated, I never had a migraine again. Now, I don't know if there's any correlation, and I'm going to say probably not. It's just in hindsight, that's what happened to me. So what am I asking of you? For a period of time, I don't know how long, 30 days, three weeks, maybe just three days, Listen to your body, the cues, your body, your emotions, your dreams. I don't do much with dreams because I, I find dream analysis way too complicated for me. I like the body and I love emotions. I'm, it's more practical for me. Dream analysis, I think, is better left to those very educated in that. So when he says... We are all called to keep this appointment with the inner life, and many of us never do. Fortunately, this insistent invitation comes to us again and again. If it's okay, and you have the time, and this kind of fit with you, let's go inside to this appointment. So, close your eyes and allow the breath to be in and out through your nose. Let go of wanting a cure, wishing you were healed wanting the answer. Let go of wanting relief.
and you know that I understand. But right now, allow your shoulders to give way. Don't carry the pressure of wishing things were different. For right now, I want to go through a different door. Not the door that we're trying to find all the answers. No, no, no. This door is just a door to a beautiful meadow with a blanket next to a stream where you can lie down. Imagine or go back in your memory to a time where you could be in a meadow with a blanket next to a stream lying down looking up at the sky. Taking in just this much. Whatever your body is feeling, is sensing, whatever is going on in your emotions, in your life. Being able to be with just this much. Don't add the pressure of another hour or day of anything continuing. I want you to imagine this blanket, this meadow, this stream, this sky. Without any pressure to have anything be different, going beyond the symptoms, the sensations of the body, the pain in the psyche, Feel yourself being supported by this meadow. And as you do, allow your breathing to slow down. Imagining that the ground, the earth, Mother Earth, pulls out of you any strain, any tension, and you are breathing in this moment, living just this much. Imagine the sky above you, the ability to be in this moment, letting go again of any pressure for anything to be different. Focus on this blue sky. And then fill in Mother Nature around you with the stream, with the mountains, and with trees.
Now feel all the pressure going into Mother Earth, going in through the blanket and into the meadow and into the dirt. Let all the pressure of wanting anything to be different so that in time you are living with just this much. Slow your breath down. And notice if your body needs a different position, needs anything else. And notice as you travel through your body, is there any place where a little tension has snuck up or any thought of wishing things were different? Wishing for relief a cure, an answer. Right now, let all of that drop away like leaves from a tree that drop to the earth. And what remains is what you need. This inner appointment with you, the you beyond the pain, the discomfort, the symptoms. Allow this image of nature surrounding you. Let it become vibrant, warm. Let it soften your body and feel taken care of as you breathe. Breathing in, just hold this, breathing out much. One breath all the way through, from beginning to end, just this much. Find that peace living with just this much. My voice will be quiet for a moment. remain closed. I want you to travel into your body above your belly button, below your ribs, right in that center, and notice how you feel. And if you feel and there's emotion Allow yourself to feel 
and allow that emotion to be felt. Allow any thoughts that might come to mind, any despair, any discouragement, any fear, hope, vision. perspective. My voice again will be quiet as you get in touch with what is there emotionally for you. still remain closed. Allow the breathing to be a little bit more conscious and breathe in what you want to feel right now. I want to feel and then travel up into your heart. Imagine the heart is the true you, the soul of you. And linger here for a moment for any guidance and direction, being able to be with just this much. And then traveling up through your throat. The breath is slow and steady. Your jaw slightly open. Then have your eyes still closed. Your attention rests right behind your eyelids. Notice what you are more aware of right now. And then slowly open your eyes. Doing these kind of meditations in my 30s is where I found the deepest connection to my relationship with spirit. You can call it God's source. And it is the only thing that really helped me when all things at the medical level did not. And sometimes just going within and then writing can be so comforting. If you can, you can go into those places in your body. Right now I'm talking more about body. And if my migraine could talk, what would it say? Well, that migraine was a volcano of resentment. Very difficult to deal with, but I dealt with it. Sometimes 
physical ailments just they're transient. They just come and go, and you don't need to do this. So you don't have to make everything a deep dive analysis. That is not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is in conjunction with your medical people, your doctors, your team, why not also journey with him and have a, a, um, a diary, a journal, writing, whatever you want to do, and keep it in one place. I am so glad that I did. So until we get together again, let me just say this, because it might have a little, little more punch. We are all called to keep this appointment with the inner life, and many of us never do. Fortunately, this insistent invitation comes to us again and again.